So now that we have Tor installed, it's time to take a look at the security Tor offers and all the different settings and configurations that Tor has. So go ahead and make sure you have Tor browser open and it is up to date and go over to that now. Back on the Tor browser here, of course, be sure your Tor browser is up to date and we'll show you the first security feature of Tor. Now you'll notice when you maximize the browser that a warning will come up right across the top bar. I have since disabled it uh, so that warning doesn't come up for me, but the warning will say something like uh, maximizing the Tor browser gives away your screen resolution, which can give away who you are. So that's just one of the benefits uh, Tor automatically detects to help keep you safer. So Tor does a lot of different things to keep you safe. Uh, one of the first things we'll look at is how the Tor Relay works. So say we wanted to go to YouTube.com. Tor does not save any of your history at all, uh, ever when you're browsing. So that's one thing to keep note of. Uh, if you look for a site, uh, you can bookmark it and things like that, but you it doesn't save the history by default. But you'll notice here we are on YouTube. Um, nothing amazing here, just regular old YouTube. It's obviously missing some compatibility features. It looks like some things are off and all that, and uh, I'll explain a little bit why later. But we'll take a look at the settings up here. Now, as you can see, this shows where we are connected to. So we go from this browser to our node in France, to our node in Spain, and to our node in Luxembourg. And take note of that uh, setup right here, France, Spain, and Luxembourg. Uh, and notice that IP as well. Uh, one of Tor features offers is called a new Tor circuit. So this is the Tor circuit. And if you wanted to help anonymize who you are or what you're doing, say you clicked on a few things and you didn't want that to stay in that session you're in, you would just press new Tor circuit. Now what this does, it'll reload the page. And this time, going back onto this, you can see we are now in a different Tor circuit. And one thing you'll notice, it doesn't change your entry node. It, it may change your middle and exit, but it will not change your entry node. That entry node, if you go back previously, you'll see the IPs were the same. Uh, the only way to change your actual entry node and your entrance into the Tor network is by pressing on new identity. When you press on new identity though, you'll notice that it brings up a prompt and it closes all the windows and tabs and completely shuts down Tor and reopens it. So we'll go ahead and do that. But you'll notice it takes a second, closes everything down, and then we'll reopen Tor, and it won't bring back any of the previous websites you had pulled up. So be careful when you're pressing around with that stuff. Uh, you don't want to accidentally close something if you need it up, uh, and then you have to get back to it, and that can just be maybe a nuisance. But be wary of exactly how those work and what they're for. Next, we'll go into the privacy and security settings. Generally, Tor security is always on high, uh, and it's best to leave it on high unless you know exactly what you're doing. Now, moving it to low gives the most usable experience. It doesn't include all the bells and whistles that help keep you safe, but it makes it easier to use. Most websites will work. When you have Tor on high, some websites will have issues. Um, if JavaScript is heavily relied on for that website, it won't be able to work and things like that. So usually leave it on high if you plan on browsing the dark web. However, if you just plan on browsing the regular web, low shouldn't, shouldn't be too bad to mess with. But don't change that unless you know exactly why you're doing it. We'll also take a look at some Tor network settings. These are different things that you can configure. You can configure bridge access or a proxy or a VPN access if you would like. Again, that's something you don't really want to mess with. And then of course you have the uh, browser update button here. And another thing you'll notice is the S with the line through it. And this is just uh, a JavaScript option. You want JavaScript disabled on everything. You can allow it though. However, of course, it says right there, it is dangerous to allow. It can cause uh, DNS leakage and things like that. And another button we'll talk about is the HTTPS Everywhere button. If a site doesn't have an SSL certificate, you won't be able to connect to it. You only connect to sites with HTTPS. This is useful in some senses, but in others it's kind of difficult because not all sites will have uh, HTTPS, so it's harder to connect to. But generally, just leave Tor defaulted and you should be fine. But that should be all the bells and whistles of Tor, guys. Uh, of course, if you have any more questions about exactly what Tor can do for you, you can go to the torproject.org and uh, read up on their documentation there. Uh, but really quickly, we'll just do a test network settings to see if everything's looking good. 
and you can see looks like we're fine that's what our IP address appears to be uh, and that's not my IP address so that's good looks good uh, looks all good so that's, uh, that's really it when it comes in the name of Tor security. By default, Tor has set up a lot of different things to help keep you very secure. So don't mess with any security settings unless you know exactly what you're doing and why you're doing it. But that pretty much wraps it up for this section. In the next section, we'll talk a bit more about Tor and actually teach you the first steps to browsing the dark web.